Hey everybody, AJ here. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at a new feature in Microsoft Teams called Microsoft Webinars. Webinars are a great way to communicate and collaborate with people digitally. And with the new Microsoft Webinars feature, you have even more ways to communicate with people inside and outside of your organization. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you really wanna supercharge how you use your computer, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. And without any further ado, let's jump straight into this. So to set up a webinar is quite similar to setting up a regular meeting. You wanna go into Microsoft Teams, scroll over to your calendar, and then in the top right hand corner, you can see it says new meeting. Next new meeting, you can drop that down and you have three options here. You've got your regular schedule Microsoft Teams meeting, which is great for small groups of people. Down the bottom, you have your live event, which is a great way to broadcast to a really large range of people, but it doesn't have the communication and back and forth that you get in a regular meeting. And now we have the feature of the Microsoft webinar. The webinar I see as a fusion of the regular small teams meeting and the really big broadcast of live event. So to create a webinar, we're simply gonna select on the webinar option. Dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna say that we are gonna be creating a new webinar. This page here should look quite similar to what you're already used to. And I just wanna let you know that what we're setting up right now is the webinar invitation link for the presenters, not for everybody else. We're gonna set it up first for the presenters. So we're gonna give this a title and we're gonna call this our first webinar presenter link. And then here we can add the presenters into the webinar if you have more than yourself presenting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in our IT manager, Alan Young. We're gonna pick a date and the time of the event. So we're gonna set this for Wednesday and the event is gonna go for 30 minutes, but I want Alan to join 30 minutes beforehand. So the event that I'm gonna send Alan is gonna be an hour long. So we're gonna run, I want Alan to join the event at 11 o'clock and it's gonna finish at 12 o'clock, but we're gonna have the webinar actually start at 11.30. So what we're putting in here is a 30 minute buffer for Alan and I to join the webinar early and we can make sure everything is up and running properly. If you have a physical location, you can actually drop in the physical room you'll be recording from. And if not, when you hit send this out, you're gonna get the Teams event link anyway. And then we can just pop in the details for this meeting. And I'm gonna say, hi, Alan, booking in a time for our first webinar. Webinar starts at 11.30 a.m. So I've added in a 30 minute buffer so we can prepare. Awesome, so we've created this link for Alan and myself and now we're gonna customize and actually create the attendee list. But before we go ahead and customize what the webinar link looks like for the attendees, we can actually go ahead and have a look at a few settings. At the top here, you can pick the time zone. This is obviously set to the default and mine is correct at the Sydney time. And next to that, you can actually have the registration requirements. And if you drop this down, you can have nobody requiring to register for your webinar. You can have people in your organization requiring to register for your webinar, or you can make everybody a required registration for the webinar. I recommend having this set for everybody. So if anybody wants to log in and see your webinar, they actually have to give you a few details and log in instead of just being able to open the link and join. So now we're gonna customize what the event looks like for the attendees. Here where it says, want your attendees to register for this webinar, you wanna send them the registration form. So we can actually view and customize the registration form by, cl by clicking on this button here called view registration form. When we select the option of view registration form, a second window is gonna pop out and it's gonna allow us to customize what the experience looks like for the attendees. Here we can actually give a name of the webinar. So we're gonna call it our first company webinar. We can set a date and the time for the attendees. So we're gonna set this for Wednesday, just like we did with Alan, we're gonna set it for Wednesday, but instead of having it 11 to 12 o'clock, we actually only want the link live for 30 minutes. So we're gonna do 11.30. It automatically gives you a Microsoft Team meeting link. And here you can add a quick description of the webinar. Hi all, this is our first company webinar, looking at the new Teams feature. So you've got a little message there for the attendees and now you can actually also add a quick speaker bio as well by simply selecting add speaker. I can add in my own name and I can say a little bit about the speaker technology. 
And then I can add a second speaker called Alan De Young, and we can add a bit about Alan as well, a true Teams guru. So now we've got our first company webinar, we've set the time, we've got a bit of information about what the webinar is about, and also about our speakers. One thing I want to call out is at the top here, it actually says Do you want to upload an image. This is great because this allows you to add some visual appeal to your webinar link. So you can simply go upload an image. It's going to pop out asking you what you want your background image to look like. And it also gives you the suggestion to that to get the best results, you want to choose an image that's at least 19, 8, 918 by 120 pixels. I'm simply going to upload an image and this is going to ask me to choose one from my computer. I've got my webinar banner here. I'm just going to go open. And you can see here that my image is actually quite big. So it's going to let me just simply move it around and choose what it's going to look like. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to hit done. It's going to render. And here you can see we have our little webinars banner at the top, the event details of our webinar. And then on the right hand side, you have the registration for this event. So here's what I think is a really cool feature that you can start collecting and gathering data about your attendees before they join the webinar. It's set automatically by asking them for their first name, their last name, and their email address, but then you can add a field and you can choose so many different options as well. You could ask for their address, their city, their state, their industry, their job title or organization, or you can even add a custom question. And you can add either an input where they can type in the answers themselves, or you could give them a multiple choice. So I'm gonna actually put in an input and I'm gonna ask the question of, what would you like to learn about Teams webinars? And then you can select the option of making this a required field that they have to fill out when they sign up for their webinar, or you could have it as optional. We'll leave this one as optional and then have a look at it. I think this is looking pretty good. We've got our details, we've got our banner, we've got a few questions there, and we have information or speaker bios about the people presenting. So now we can simply hit save, and this is gonna give us a preview of the form. It may take a second to save, and it also gives you a reminder to make sure you send the invitation to the presenters as well. So now we can actually copy the registration link and start sending it off to our attendees, or we could view it in a browser, to see what it looks like for our attendees. So now we've customized our webinar for the way we want it to be. We've got our speakers, we've set the time, we've customized the registration link. Now it's time to get more people to our registration. What you have to do now is simply copy the registration link and you can start sending this off to all different people. So there's an option here that says copy registration link and then we can just jump over to our emails and we can start mailing this off or you could post this onto your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever works for you to get people registered for your webinar. Registration link below. And now we can control Z that and paste that in. What I like to do though is actually create a little hyperlink and call it and put the word link in big bold letters and press control K and actually put in a hyperlink to our registration and hit OK. So then we can put in the details of everybody we want to send that to, hit the send button and off we go. When the recipient receives your invitation to the webinar, they simply select on your link, it's going to open up their web browser and then they're going to be greeted with this really nice welcome page that we set up before. You see here that it says our first company webinar, it's got the event details, the speaker information, the registration information for this event where it asks us a few questions, they'd fill that out and then they simply hit register. Really easy, really simple, and I think it's really, really powerful. Awesome, so you can see here that we are on the web, and this is our first company webinar. We have our event details, our speakers, and now we can register. What would you like to learn about Teams webinars? Everything. So excited about this feature. And we're gonna go ahead and hit register. So now we have our first attendee registered for our webinar. So if we go over to Deborah's email, you see that there is a message here from Microsoft Teams and it says our first company webinar. And if she simply selects on the file here, it's gonna pop up and she can actually just go add this to the calendar. So she gets a reminder when that webinar is about to start and also so it goes into her calendar so she can see it in her week view. So we're gonna go add to calendar and now this has been added to Deb's calendar. 
So jumping back to our Microsoft team page here, you can see that we're still in our first webinar and this is our presenter link. One great thing about it is that it actually gives you your registration details. So this shows you who is registered for your event and what the answer they've put into those questions you ask when they're adding the registration form. So we're gonna quickly download this file, we're gonna open it up and let's see who's registered for our event. So you can see here that we have only one participant who's joined us. It's Deborah Berger with her email address. And what would you like to learn about the Teams webinar? She wants to learn everything. She's so excited about this feature. And it shows us the date that she registered as well. One really cool feature about the Microsoft webinar is that once you've created your webinar, you can actually go back into the settings and you can actually go to your meeting options to allow presenters the ability to share content. And this really lets you get granular into who and what can share and see content in your webinar. So we're gonna go into the change options menu and we're gonna see what and who can share and present. So the first option it gives you are your meeting options of who can bypass the lobby. So it's default set to people I invite, so people that the organizer has set the meeting invitation to, but you could let everybody bypass the lobby. You could let only people in your organization bypass it. You could let people in your organization and guests. So you have so many different options here, or you could set it to only you, and then everybody has to wait before you let them in. So I like the option of leaving it as people I invite because that most likely means that you've invited yourself and a few presenters and they can join the webinar before it starts. The, uh, the next option is the ability to let callers bypass the lobby. So not everybody is gonna dial in using Microsoft Teams. Some people may choose to use the phone in option because they could be on the road and they only have their mobile phone handy or their only option is to dial into the webinar for whatever reason. So you could let those on the phone uh, bypass the lobby by simply selecting yes or no. You can choose to announce when callers join or leave. I like to keep this as a no option because it means you get less interruptions throughout the day. So you can also select who can present for the meeting. So naturally it knows that ourself will be a presenter and then Alan DeYoung, he's already in there as a presenter. So he's got the ability to present, but if we don't want Alan to present, we can actually get rid of him and we can keep it just ourselves. So to get rid of Alan, you simply hit the X option here. I'd like to keep him there because it means that he has ability to take over the screen when it's his turn to start presenting. The next options I think are really quite cool and something that really extends from what a Microsoft Live event is. And this is the ability to let the microphone and the cameras work for the attendees. So you might wanna give the attendees the ability to use their microphone. This way they can talk and you can have some dialogue there but you could have them not have the ability to turn their cameras on. And that means that all the attention and focus is gonna be on the content presented because no one's gonna have accidentally have their camera on and spotlight themselves. So I think this is a really cool feature where you can choose to allow attendees to have their microphones and their cameras enabled or disabled. And next you can choose whether you wanna have an in-meeting chat. So you could allow them to chat in the meeting only. You could totally disable this so there's no chat options allowed or you could enable this perpetually so they can talk before and after the webinar starts. I actually like the option of just keeping this as enabled, although as default, it's set as in meeting only. And then of course, you can turn on the Microsoft reactions, yes or no. This by default is set to yes, but you can turn it to no if you don't want those live reactions. I actually really like the reactions, so I always keep these as yes. I'd recommend having a look at your meeting options for your webinar because this really lets you customize and edit the way you want your webinar to be run. And then when you're happy with it, simply hit save. All right, so the big day has arrived. It's Wednesday, it's time for our webinar and we're gonna kick off. To kick off your webinar, you're simply gonna open it up just like you would any other team's meeting and then hit join. Very excited because it's our first Microsoft Teams webinar. We're gonna open this up and then now here we can choose our background effects, our computer audio, all that standard sort of stuff. And we're gonna hit join. And now we just have to wait for some people to join us. While we're waiting for the attendees to join the meeting, I wanna show you a few tips and tricks that will make your webinar stand out even more. So let's start by sharing some content here for our attendees. We're gonna hit the share tray and then we're gonna choose whether we wanna share our desktop screen or whether we wanna share our window only. We could choose to share a file from our whiteboard, our OneDrive, but what I wanna show you here is actually at the top here, you've got this thing called presenter mode. Presenter mode's quite new and it lets you share just the content or it's got this awesome option of called standout. 
I'm gonna show you what standout looks like because I think it is a very cool, very fun option, which does make you stand out and makes your presentations even more interactive. But enough talking, I'll show you what it looks like now. So I'm gonna choose a window to share with you. And what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like for the attendee when they try and join the meeting as well, simply by sharing my mail app here, which we're gonna show you what it looks like for our attendee, Christy Klein, to join the meeting. So let's hit the share option. Teams is gonna minimize. And what you're gonna see here is that all the attendees will actually see this little window here where I'm sharing the content, but now I've actually superimposed inside of the window. I can go in and I can grab some things around me. You can see it's put put me in a little box, but it's taken away all the background around me and it's really just superimposed me inside of the window that we're sharing. I think it's really quite cool and it does add that extra element to your webinars. And this used to require a green screen and a whole bunch of different software and programs, but now you can do it all inside of Microsoft Teams. But let's stop sharing for a second and let's see what it looks like when an attendee wants to join the Teams webinar. So we're now in Deb Berger's calendar and we can see that she has our first company webinar starting now. So she just simply opens up the invitation and goes join the event. This will either ask her to launch Teams or in this scenario, we're gonna launch it on the web. There's no real difference here. We're just gonna go continue using the web browser. And what you'll see is that when she goes to sign in, we can choose to have the camera and the microphone enabled, but when we set the options before, we chose to disable all the attendee cameras. So watch what happens when she selects camera. So we can choose here to sign in using the camera and the microphone and hit join. You can see here though, the camera is unable to be turned on. We can jump back over to that Teams site here as the main presenter though. We can see we've got Deborah waiting in the lobby and let's simply go admit. So now we're gonna let Deb out of the lobby and into the first webinar. You can see that Deborah has joined us, but there are two options here saying that her camera has been disabled and her microphone has been disabled. This is great because it means that when you're presenting to a whole lot of people, you might not want them to have their cameras on to distract from the content and you might want their microphones muted so that they don't accidentally start talking over the top of the presenter. But here you can select on the options or the ellipses and we can choose to allow Deborah to have a microphone on or we could allow her to have her camera on. This won't turn it on for the attendee, but gives them the option to unmute themselves. And this is great for that live time collaboration so they can ask questions when it comes up to question time. Once we're done running our webinar, we can simply drop down the option next to leave and we can choose to end the meeting for everybody. We've had a successful first webinar. Are you sure you wanna end the meeting? We're simply gonna go, yes, let's end it. And that's gonna end the webinar for everybody involved. So now I've just had our first successful company webinar and we wanna get some analytics about who joined, what time they joined, and if they asked any questions. So we're simply gonna go back into our webinar link. And what you see at the top here, you have the option of your chats, your files, your details. And on the right hand side, there is the option of your attendance. This is gonna give you the attendee list of everybody that joined your webinar. This is great because you can actually start seeing the registrations as people start scrolling and registering for your webinar. But then you can actually go into the attendee list and see what time they joined, what time they left, and how long they were in the webinar for. But also you can see the status of whether they were registered or whether they were just drop-ins. You could see what questions were asked, by who, and you get a lot of analytics here for the webinar. Now, unfortunately, this webinar in this company isn't very big, so we only had one registered attendee and two attendees in the meeting, ourselves and Deborah, our attendee. But imagine if you did this with 50, 60, 100, 200 people, you'd get a lot of great information about your webinar. So there you guys have it. That is an introduction to the webinars feature in Microsoft Teams. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you really wanna supercharge how you use your computer, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. Happy webinars. I'll see you next time. Bye.